Okay, I'm going to show you guys how to make a lino cut print, but we are going to use this rubber vinyl material instead of linoleum because it's easier to cut um, at home and you don't need a bench hook to hold it in place like you do uh, with linoleum. So it should be easier to work with, but we're gonna treat it pretty much the same as we would linoleum. So here are examples of linoleum plates. So the negative space has been cut, and then what's raised, this is a relief print, is what prints. So here's an example of a fish that my friend Julie made. This is the plate, not the print from it. Um, this was a carrot that I made. This is a, a penguin I made for my Christmas card. Here is the linoleum plate of my dog with the ink still on it um, because it shows exactly the print that, um, that I made, even though this is just a piece of linoleum. I don't know where my actual print is. Um, and you can see only what you cut is what's light. Um, this was a pine cone print. Well, this is the printing plate. Um, so you guys are going to choose something that you love. So I printed my um, camper because I love to go camping. And we have this old um, camper I actually did a reduction print, which means I cut and I print the red and then I cut some more where I wanted it to stay red and I printed black on top of the red. So this is a little more complicated, but we are just doing a straight um, one color print. So you're just cutting away what's white or the background paper color and you're leaving standing what is going to print. So. You're going to take your piece of um, vinyl rubber stuff and you need to make some sketches. So think about things that you love. Um, and so this gives you, you can do as many sketches as you want. Whatever you draw is going to be transferred to the um, rubber or vinyl easily. So I did a few um, sketches already. I drew our um, brayer that we're using because I love printmaking. I drew um, a palette and paint brushes and I drew, I love spring and I love sunsets and sunrises. So um, I thought this kind of represents that. Um, so do as many drawings as you need to. Um, whatever you love, if you love your shoes or you love your watch or you love um, playing violin, whatever it is, that's what you should draw. Or um, if you're Larry and you love to play drums, I've been wanting him to make a drum uh, print so badly. So say I decided I'm going to try to print my um, brayer. I'm going to turn this into a print. So it's already traced. I traced this so it fits this. What's nice about this stuff is you can just rub this onto it and it will print in this uh, it, right ways. So even if you had a letter or numbers, um, it would still print the right way. You can put it on here going the right direction, transfer it this way, and it'll be in reverse on here, which means it'll print correctly. So as long as you have your pencil pretty dark on here, you know, go over your lines if this is the one you like, and just make sure they're really dark. And because I want to cut some these lines going out this way. You're just gonna put it on top of your um, vinyl rubber stuff. And then you can use this flat part of the handle. You can also use like the side of a pencil. You do have to kind of hold it still. And this will transfer your drawing right on to your rubber vinyl stuff. 
So you either have this light colored stuff or you have this gray um, covered stuff. And I think it's five inches by six. It's either five by six or four by six. So it's your bigger rectangular piece of rubber vinyl stuff. So it's either white or it's gray. So I'm going to peek and make sure all my stuff is transferring, which I think it is. Except this little bottom part of the handle. Okay, so then when you get your... Um, your design transferred, you're going to use your linoleum cutter or your gouge to cut. So when you're cutting, you're cutting away what is not going to print. So like all of the background, everything that you want white. So we're going to cut around these things that are dark. So you'll probably want to figure out what you want dark ahead of time. Like I should have done that. And I may want this pretty dark, but I might put a few cuts in here to make it look kind of round here. And I think I will make like the outline of this dark. And I'll leave the inside light and maybe um, this part light. Uh, and I'm saying this all uh, like it, it an afterthought and you guys actually you need to think about this more when you're actually getting ready to do it because when you cut it it's gone so you want to know what is light and what is dark so I would trace it back over especially if you have like a, a black sharpie go over your lines that you have and then uh, and I should do that. So I'm going to do that. Okay, so not only did I trace over my lines, but I filled in because I really need bigger areas that are dark. I also made it almost like there's a shadow here. So I kind of made this thicker here, made this thicker here, I made this thicker here. I put my dark in here and I put it in the direction that I want it so I can still cut like little bits here to have light. So everything that's light on here, I'm going to cut. I want to cut it in a direction that I like because that's part of what makes lino cuts so cool is that you can see this little residual um, background. So the way you cut away your background, that's going to show, which is cool. That's what makes it really look like a, um, a lino cut. Okay, so then I am ready to cut. Number one rule on this is that you cut away from your hand. You do not cut like this. You're going to want to hold it in place, but do not cut towards your hand. So you're going to butt this into the palm of your hand. You're going to put your forefinger on the top and it's kind of like a shovel and you're going to guide it this way. So if you're right handed, your left hand is here and you're cutting away from it. So if I need to cut like right here, I'm not going to have my hand here. I'm going to turn so I'm cutting away from my hand. So the blade that's already in there should be good. Um, I think there's a smaller blade taped to your um, gouge, and I can show you in class how to change that. But you, you would just unscrew this a little bit, not all the way, and you can slide out your blade, and then you can put another one in, push it down, and then tighten this back up. But the one that's in there should be okay. So I'm going to start... Um, and you might want to start where you know, like, uh, there's nothing you can really mess up. So, like, I'm going to start cutting this background away. And you don't have to dig down deep. Just enough to remove that. So, these little lines that are showing up are going to be... Uh, little residual parts of those are going to show, which is good. So I want to think about the direction. I want this to have like this kind of radiating look. 
So say I want to cut around this shape. I'm always cutting away from my other hand. So I'm just turning this all the time so that I have one. I'm always cutting away. So you can kind of guide it, but this, this hand is off to the side. So I'm always, I've got both hands behind this um, gouge. So if I want this light, I just tell myself these hands have to be here behind my gouge. So here it's like a shovel kind of. So if you want, you can cut around your shape. And you don't have to cut super deep. So whatever you do, so I'm cutting around what I know is dark. And then I'm going to be cutting all this uh, background. Now, if I don't want to have to cut all of this white area away, I can kind of divide it up. Like maybe I want to have um, something dark under here. But for this to show up, you have to have light also. So make a few cuts where you know it's not right next to a shape until you kind of get the hang of it. Remember to always have your hands behind and you're cutting away from both of your hands. You'll just turn this vinyl stuff so that you can cut in the direction that you want. So if I wanted to cut here, I'd say, oh, okay, I have to turn it this way and cut away. I want to cut this outside of the um, grayer handle. So you're just turning this Final, so you're always cutting away from your hand. They're behind you. If you happen to forget, which that happens to a lot of us, and you accidentally cut yourself, go wash it with um, warm water and soap. If you have peroxide, pour that on there and put a Band-Aid on it. So you're going to cut... Everything that's light, um, and I was saying with this, these highlights, I might cut a few little marks in here, but I want this brayer, the rubber part of the brayer to be black, but I'm just going to cut a few little highlights in here to see, just so it'll look round like a brayer. So whatever you're cutting, think about how that's going to be. Like on my penguin, I cut so this horizontally to remove this background because with the marks that do show up, I want those to look like ice or uh, water. Okay, so I carved away all the parts that I want to be light. And I carved in that direction. So it looks like it's kind of got this, these radiating marks. I even cut a little bit into my uh, the dark part of where my brayer is going to be. I cut this inside away. And I am going to print it. I'm going to make a, an artist proof, which is what you do. It's like your first trial print. You do want to get all those little pieces out off of it. So bend it, mess with it until all those little pieces go away. Because if those get in your ink, it will mess up your print. So I'm ready to see how it looks. So I get my plexiglass. I get my black ink. I just had my black ink. Where to go? Here it is black ink and you need your knife and I'm going to be inking this with the brayer. Look, I'm going to be inking it with that very brayer that it is a, an image of. So get like a tablespoon amount of 
um, ink, put it towards the top of your plexiglass, set your brayer down in, grab a glob, and then work it out evenly underneath. So go out every direction, pick it up, set it back down. You want that nice, even sound. I definitely don't want it to fill in all those little areas that I cut so carefully. So this is nice and even. So I'm going to ink my plate. Look how cool it already looks. This is like my favorite part. So make sure you go all the way to the edges. Okay, so this tells me I might want to cut some more of this later. I don't know. It's my, oops, my practice print. So I'm going to roll it out evenly. I want to make sure I get it inked really nicely. Nice and thin, nice and even. All right. Okay. So to print this, best way to line up your paper is to have the same size underneath. So have two pieces of paper that are the same size. So I'm going to put one underneath. Let me do this so you can see. But I'm going to put one underneath and that'll help me line up my... Um, my piece that I'm printing on. So I'm gonna put this in the middle. That way when I put my paper on top, I know that that is in the center. That's where I want it. So I set my paper down. Now this time, we are gonna use the flat part of the handle to burnish it. So I'm keeping it flat, it's like horizontal, and there's a flat part of that wooden handle. You could also use like a wooden spoon, and I'm going to make sure I go in both directions so that it picks up my whole print. Now I'm going to cheat and peek. Ooh, it's going to look good. I'm going to cheat. Now, if I see a part that's not printing, I'm going to lay it back down and I'm going to burnish it some more and voila, there's my print. So all those cut marks show up. That's why it's important to um, have a plan, you know, to do those in a certain direction. I really like this print actually. Um, this time you don't need to spray your paper. You should be able to get a really nice print, but you do need to get your ink really um, nice and even. This also is great because you can wash it. You can totally rinse this off and ink and print it in different colors onto different colored paper. I could um, rinse it off and I could cut more. So this is my practice print. You know what I did not cut is a little circular part there. So I think I will rinse it off and I will cut that little um, side view of the brayer. All right. So I want, when you do this, I want um, three prints at least. And you are going to sign these. So the very first one, if you changed it afterwards, your first one is actually called an artist proof. So that is um, the way you do, you just put AP. Remember, you always sign in pencil. So there's my signature. If I did three more after I adjusted it and they were the same, I would number those in a fraction. So if my next print, say this is my next print, I would sign my name here. If I had three, th this would be one over three. This would be an addition of prints. My next one, the fraction would say two over three. 
and the third one would say three over three. And that's how you know when you look at prints, like how valuable they are, where there are only a hundred prints made and yours is number one or two, the earlier numbers are usually better prints also. So that's the addition. Anyway, so that's how you um, cut and make your faux lino cut print using the rubber um, vinyl.